Good evening, everyone. Um, thanks for being here. Sorry we're starting a few minutes late this evening. Um, but I want to call to order this um, uh, meeting of the Capitola City Council, which is being held on Tuesday, November 22nd, in view of the uh, uh, observance of Thanksgiving on this Thursday, which would be a regularly scheduled council meeting. With that, um, I'll ask for a roll call. Present. Uh, Councilmember Brooks? Here. Vice Mayor Kaiser? Here. Mayor Story? Here. And Councilmember Bertrand is absent. Maybe I understand he's on his way, so maybe you could just make note when he arrives. Yes. So, um, and, and now will everybody join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, now I'll, I'll ask if there's any uh, additions or deletions to the agenda. Staff has no changes to the agenda this evening. No changes. We'll move on now then to presentations. And we have one presentation this evening, which is a staff uh, introduction of our new city clerk, mm -hmm. Julia Moss. Um, is there somebody that's going to lead us in this presentation? And Jamie? I'm, I'm going to take a stab at it. Go for it. So I really want to welcome Julia Moss to Capitola as our new city clerk. She joins us from San Diego area where she's worked as a deputy clerk for both the cities of San Marcos and Oceanside. Julia actually went to the University of San Diego, obtained a bachelor's degree in sociology and communications, um, and she has done a great job of sort of growing her skills over throughout her career. She's worked um, in the airline industry as well as for local government, and interestingly is also a native of Santa Cruz County grew up in the Santa Cruz Mountains, and she's living in Scotts Valley. So really extend a warm welcome to Julia. Usually people get to attend these meetings and be introduced and, and then go home. Julia's on the job and working this evening, so. Glad to be here. <laughs> yeah, so welcome. <laughs> well, would you like to say a few words, Julia? Sure. Well, I'm really glad to be back in the area. I moved away from Santa Cruz County about almost 15 years ago now, and I didn't ever think I was gonna come back. And when this opportunity presented itself, it really felt like a wonderful homecoming. And I'm really thrilled to be back working for a city that I grew up frequenting and being closer to family is really wonderful for me. So I appreciate the opportunity to serve you guys as the city clerk, and I look forward to working with all of you. Okay, uh, council members, um, would you like to extend a welcome to uh, Julia? Welcome, and I apologize in advance for when things get crazy up here and you have to take the minutes for it. So. <laughs> Welcome, Julia. Excited to work with you. Same. I'm, I'm happy that you're here. Thank you. Yes, and well, um, congratulations on coming back home uh, and on becoming part of the uh, city of Capitola family. I think uh, we feel fortunate to have you here with your background as a deputy clerk. Um, and especially in the airline industry, uh, you may be helping us uh, to fly this ship <laughs> in days to come. Uh, so welcome, Julia. We look forward to working with you. Thanks so much. So do we have um, any additional materials uh, for this evening's meeting? Staff did receive a public comment related to item 8A, and a copy of that has been posted online, and there's a copy available for you at the dais. Thank you. Uh, this um, additional, this email will be included as part of the record. Uh, before I go any further, I did want to thank our technician for the evening, Eric, uh, who is manning um, our audiovisual in the background there and making it available for future rebroadcast. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the information on those ex exact dates, but. If you're interested, uh, look it up on the City of Capitola's website. Um, next, we'll move on to 
oral communications. This is opportunity for members of the public to address the City Council on items that are either not on tonight's agenda or are on tonight's consent agenda. Um, for those of you in the audience, copies of the agendas are at the back of uh, the chambers. Um, so uh, is there any member of the audience in, that's here in person that would like to address the council? Seeing none, um, Julio, do we have anyone on Zoom that would like to address the council? Not at this time. Okay. Next, we'll move on to staff and city council comments. We'll start with staff comments. I have a couple of just short updates for council, starting at the very small scale. We have been using the funding. You'll recall in our budget this year, we allocated $100,000 to help do some work around city hall. And you notice a couple items on your closed session, or your open session uh, consent calendar agenda to approve a new roof and then some backup power generation as well. We've also been working hard upstairs. For those of you who haven't seen it, we actually have been finishing up um, kind of a staff reorganization, moving people around, and setting up a new meeting room, which is very exciting for us because City Hall hasn't had a meeting room. So I want to thank the council for those funds, and um, we're looking forward to being able to invest in this facility. I also will note that we are hoping to uh, be able to upgrade the public restrooms downstairs here, which I know have been a, a needing up, uh, upgrades for quite a while. Uh, secondarily, uh, as everyone is well aware, we have a request in. Uh, Congressman Panetta has requested three and a half million dollars to help fund our wharf project. Uh, that is contingent on the federal budget, which, as you probably know, still hasn't been adopted. Um, my hope is that after the Thanksgiving break, they're going to roll up their sleeves, and we should be receiving word hopefully in a couple of short weeks uh, after the uh, after the Thanksgiving break. All right. Thank you. Any other? Uh Staff comments? Seeing none. Uh, city Council comments? Yeah, I had a quick one. Sorry. No, oh, okay. Um, just that we, um, at our little city, is offering our free parking in the village, which is a great um, holiday tradition that we've done here to help um, promote small businesses and restaurants within the village. So it's three hours. It goes from Thanksgiving to Christmas. Come and shop. We're gonna have the wreaths up soon too. Those are oh. great, great selfie stations. Yeah. Uh, if I could also make a quick comment. Certainly. Um, I, I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge the victims of the tragedy of in Club Q in Colorado Springs this past week. Um, this kind of senseless violence has no place in our society, and I'd like to ask our mayor if we might adjourn tonight's meeting in honor of those that were lost. Certainly, I think that would be very fitting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Comments on, yes, Council no. Member Bertrand. Uh, my apologies to the Council for being late, and uh, thank you, Margo, for giving me a call. Yeah. I was emptying the garbage. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you could make it. Yeah. Any other Council comments? None? Okay. I have no comments, so now we'll move. I, I, I do have a little Go comment ahead. about uh, Club Q. And um, you know the person who was able to uh, restrain the uh, assault person. So um, it's, it's sort of like me when in San Francisco. I, I went to a lot of gay clubs because there was a lot of different things happening there that was very interesting. And this assault um, was stopped by a person who brought the family and kids there. So my I think the thing to dwell on is that um, this is a very inclusive community. And, you know, when I grew up in San Francisco, that was my experience, especially before AIDS and even after AIDS, a uh, very inclusive community and um, the sense that they were just so full of life and happy to be is something you truly have to experience and it's often forgotten in our public discourse, but um, it, it's something truly amazing. So I think that fact is something to dwell on. Thank you, uh, Council Member Bertrand. Um, next, we'll move on to the consent items for this evening. These items will be handled with a single vote uh, unless a council member wishes to pull any item for further discussion. 
Just looking to my left, any items to pull? Looking to my right, no items to pull. Um, and um, so I'll entertain a motion, but I would like to ask that we have uh, item F be pulled as a separate vote um, since I have a um, uh, conflict uh, on that item, as at least a piece of it. Um, so if we could maybe, I will, so I can recuse myself on that particular vote. So we can, can we have a motion on the other items? I can make a motion to um, consent items A through E. Second. And well, and then G through L. Oh, G I'm through L. No. It, oh, it's long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and G through L, please. <laughs> okay, there's a motion by uh, Vice Mayor Kaiser was, and the second by Council Member Bertrand. Can we have a roll call vote, please, on those items? Councilmember Brown? Aye. Councilmember Brooks? Aye. Councilmember Bertrand? Aye. Vice Mayor Kaiser? Aye. And Mayor Story? Aye. Next, can we have a motion concerning item F? Um, and maybe just um, uh, to explain why I asked for that separately and that I'm going to recuse myself on that because uh, parts of that pertain to the Monarch Cove, uh, which is within my zone of of uh, conflict of interest. So um, can we have a motion and a second? I'll move approval of item F on consent. I'll second. Okay, there's a motion by Council Member Brown, seconded by Council Member Brooks. Uh, can we have a roll call vote on that, please? Council Member Brown? Aye. Council Member Brooks? Aye. Council Member Bertrand? I agree. Uh, Vice Mayor Kaiser? Aye. And Mayor Story? Recuse. That takes us to uh, general government and public hearings for this evening. The first item A is the San Jose Avenue parking layout modifications. The recommended action is to authorize modifications to on-street parking on San Jose Avenue. Can we have a staff report, please? All right, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. I am pleased to give my first staff report in front of the Council here, uh, seeking authorizations for modifications to the parking layout on San Jose Avenue. Um, as you all know, in June, the City Council adopted the Coastal Commission conditions for the outdoor dining ordinance, and it went into effect. In August, the uh, Capitola Wine Bar requested parking modifications to San Jose Avenue to better accommodate the outdoor dining in front of their business. Uh, preliminarily, staff agreed that this new layout would improve outdoor dining. Um, prior to moving forward with the engineering review, the owners of the Capitola Wine Bar obtained support letters from their adjacent property owners, that being the Taffy Shop, Left Coast Sausage Works, Caruso's, The Rainbow Store, and 120 Esplanade. The city then contracted with uh, Kimley Horn to provide a site investigation of existing street conditions and prepare a conceptual design, which is very small on the screen up here. I do have a close-up picture on the next slide. Uh, the proposed modifications mostly affect the south side, so the left side of the street, um, and flips the diagonal parking in front of the restaurant businesses to make those parallel spots, and then diagonal parking on the lower side of the screen. So you can see that a bit better in this screen. Uh, Left Coast Sausage Works, Capitola Wine Bar, and um, Caruso's have been working collaboratively to kind of arrange where their outdoor dining is going to be. Uh, these spots here are more of just providing a visual. They are not by no means the uh, final delineations of their outdoor dining space. However, it does include their bicycle parking and other requirements of their outdoor dining spaces. And then you have your parallel or your diagonal spots on the opposite side of the street. This leaves a standard 10-foot uh, drive lane. Um, there are no net loss to parking. There are 28 spots now in this segment of street, and there's 28 spots here in this proposed configuration. Uh, the one difference being the ADA spot would move to the opposite side of the street into a um, parallel spot. So upon approval of this configuration this evening, uh, the restaurants may proceed with the uh, obtaining a building permit for their outdoor dining decks. 
Prior to construction of the first deck uh, projected in early 2023, staff will uh, obtain bids and restripe the roadway, which would require closing of the road for one day and a cost of approximately $5,000. Uh, in conclusion, staff finds that the modified parking layout is the preferred configuration to accommodate long-term outdoor dining uses for the dining establishments on San Jose Avenue. And uh, the community director, development director, here Lee, is available for any planning-related questions. And I am happy to answer any public works-related questions for this item. Other questions from council members? Yes, council member uh, Brown. Thank you. Um, so you mentioned that after this, the businesses will be able to proceed with obtaining the permits. So they haven't been able to up until now because of this process. Is that right? This is per their request. So they have not moved forward because they were hoping that this request would be approved. Sure, sure. But the other businesses have since then, since been able to start the process of obtaining their permits. They have started their design. Okay, thank you. Any other questions on the staff report? Um, I just I just had one question, Jessica. When they um, restripe the parking spaces, they're they're gonna the the numbers will be reordered, and will the parking meters need to be reprogrammed to accommodate that? I think so, because the number of spaces on the side each side of the street will change. So they will be the yeah. same numbers, but they will have to be reprogrammed to the specific spaces. Right, okay. And our system has the capability of adjusting. Oh, good. Yeah, okay. I actually have one question um, about the ADA spot. Mm -hmm. Will it be in an accessible way to get to the sidewalk? Like, is it gonna be the first spot? Yes, okay. it'll be where a uh, existing curb cut is. And I think I may have a slide that maybe better shows shows that. So it's the third slide from the bottom here, and there is a uh, driveway alley right there and a curb cut. Yeah. Okay, cool, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, good. Um, seeing no other questions from council on the staff report, I'll open it up to members of the audience that would like to address the council on this item. Is there anyone that would like to speak? Um, I'll check. Uh, Julie, anyone on Zoom that have their hand raised? There are no speakers. No speakers, okay. Well, I'll bring it back to the council for further deliberation uh, and possible action. Um, any uh, opening thoughts by council members? I just have a question or, or a comment rather based on um, the additional material that we received. You know, right now the businesses have until January 1st and because of the additional time, I understand that it was, you know, at the request of the businesses, but I'm wondering if we could get any information about the potential for an extension for these particular businesses since they haven't been able to go forward with their design while this was underway and if there's any kind of impact that would prevent us from doing that otherwise. Good evening. Um, yes, uh, we, we can be flexible with the businesses. Um, our protocol was to make sure that people, that each business continued to work on their permits and since there has been such a delay in looking at this and having engineering work, we can definitely work with those businesses and just keep them to the same standard as all the other businesses of moving along with their permits and ensuring that they're working towards it. Okay, so just as long as there's momentum towards the end result, there is not a need for like a set additional deadline. Correct. Okay, cool, thank you. Yeah. Just a follow up to that though, um, the um, rentals, is that effective um, starting January 1st or March the 1st or? So the rent has been in place since September It's already 15th, existing. So we are collecting okay. full rent from all establishments that are participating in the lottery and they've just had to show us that they're continuing to work with right, their their landscape architect or that their building plans are in and so we do have a guarantee that everyone has been working. Good. All right. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on the item? Um, does legal suggest that we add this extension to our motion this evening? If I can't see Samantha on the screen so I don't know. Well, I don't think we need one. We don't need to. As long so as they're showing, as long as they're the showing, they're still moving forward. It doesn't need to be done by okay. January first, right? Is that what I'm understanding? That, yeah, that's correct. It wasn't a hard deadline. The community development director in our 
published rules has the ability to extend it. Uh, and so, you know, what Katie and I have talked about is, is it's provided people are moving forward. There's obviously, this took a little bit longer to work this out, but provided we're make, seeing progress, plans are coming in, they're getting scheduled for the planning commission, that we would extend that date. Okay. Um, thank you. I'll go ahead and um, move the authorization for modifications to on-street parking on San Jose Avenue. I can second. Okay. There's a motion by Councilmember Brooks, uh, seconded by Vice Mayor Kaiser. Um, I'll uh, ask for a roll call vote. Councilmember Brown? Aye. Councilmember Brooks? Aye. Councilmember Bertrand? I agree. Vice Mayor, Ki or Vice Mayor Kaiser? Aye. And Mayor Story? Aye. That motion passes unanimously, which will bring us to item 8B. That item is to, um, you're welcome, Josh. Good night. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Um, the next item is uh, 8B, which is to authorize a request for proposals for the J Street Park Universally Accessible Playground Project. And the recommended action is to authorize the Public Works Department to issue a request for proposals for the design of a universally accessible playground at J Street Park. And um, Jessica, you're going to have two in a row? Yes. All right. <laughs> Uh, s staff is pleased to present the authorization for this RFP for a universally accessible, or UA, playground at Jade Street Park. Um, so as you all know, Jade Street is a public park operated and maintained by the city under a long-term use agreement with the SoCal Union Elementary School District, which was renewed this evening on the consent calendar. Uh, the proposed playground will replace an existing playground that was installed in 1999 and uh, part of it in 2007, which is aging like you would expect a 15 to 20 year old playground to age. Um, during the budget discussions for the fiscal year 22-23 budget, uh, the council allocated $275,000 to pursue this project. Um, a little refresher from the budget discussions last May, a universally accessible playground and recreation area is specifically uh, built to facilitate opportunities for children of all abilities, um, obviously physical abilities, but then also uh, children of all abilities. So it includes uh, sensory, communicative, cognitive, other amenities to offer a really all-inclusive experience uh, to remove barriers between children and give them a play, chance to play and work together. Um, there's many examples of UA uh, playgrounds in Northern California that have popped up in the past five to 10 years, um, but the most notable for us is one in our backyard, uh, the Leo's Haven at Chanticleer County Park that has a farm theme and opened in January of 2020. Um, a major player of the development and uh, fundraising for this park was uh, the County Park Friends, or excuse me, Friends of County Parks. Um, Friends of County Parks is a nonprofit whose mission is to maximize the use of county parks for all users. The, so they fund programming, but also facilitate uh, fundraising for capital projects. Uh, most recently, they've um, funded to construction Leo's Haven and Hidden Beach County Park, and currently have funding campaigns open for Floral County Park and Felt Street County Park. Uh, staff is pleased to report that the Friends Board of Directors have conceptually approved partnering with the city on a fundraising effort uh, for a UA playground at Jade Street Park, uh, subject to approving a formal agreement or an MOU with the city. So, how do we get to an MOU with the city and the Friends? Um, we need a conceptual design. So, assuming that we are approved to issue an RFP next week, um, we would be developing a uh, conceptual design over the spring and summer of July 2023 and uh, starting a fundraising campaign in the fall of 2023. This is pretty streamlined for our park development. However, this fits in with the County Parks Friends schedule of their kind of fundraising and their overall schedule and their availability. Um, so the RFP that was included in your packet this evening includes tasks, um, including community input, which is really a important part of developing a conceptual design. It would involve community meetings, surveys, really being able to get the feedback for the users of the uh, improved park. Um, it would explore a range of budget options, um, which would, the budget would really be dependent 
um, the footprint, and then the design elements. So on the screen, there's a uh, picture of the playground site, which is current, and then potential park area that the playground site or other amenities could move into. Um, elements such as walkway connections, picnic shelters, rubberized play surfaces, benches, things to really uh, optimize park use for the users. Um, from that effort, we would come up with a robust conceptual design, so something really detailed, something with a very honed in cost estimate uh, to create visuals and help potential donors really understand the project and the project components, um, all the way down to specific elements, like on the bottom of the screen there, for uh, people to sponsor specifically, uh, such as a zip line or other um, tactile items, um, really giving different ranges for people to donate and be involved in the project. So the city has done previous fundraising efforts, most recent for the library and prior to that for McGregor Park. Uh, this model with the friends is really us after we, the city, after uh, developing the really detailed concept plan, handing it over to the MOU and them doing all of the fundraising efforts. Um, so they really spearheaded they, to meet the funding gap between the improvement costs and the money that the city has already put towards the project. Um, they handled the advertising, press releases, they set up a platform for donations. Uh, they also do some soliciting of potential sponsors and donors. Um, something like this is usually, um, in the friend's experience, about a year-long effort. And during that time, uh, as we get closer to our fundraising goals, we would get our final plan specifications and estimates completed so we have a shovel-ready project at the same time that the fundraising comes to a close. And then the fun part, we get to do construction. So um, these projects usually take about six to 12 months to construct, um, just depending on the scope of the project. Our goal here by having a fundraising uh, campaign start next fall is to have a completed park open to the public by fall of 2025. So the recommendation is up on the screen. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions from council members on the staff report? The side, right? Yes, Councilmember Bertrand. I was looking at that picture and it looked like a bunch of citizens rather than company workers putting things together. Oh and no, that part we get a contractor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I, I, I just wanted to yes. wonder about that. Okay. Wait, that's a farm I put together, a, a swing yeah. at UCSC. And that was a fun project, but it would have gone a lot faster if there were contractors. I just wanted to clarify that under the RFP, we're asking uh, the uh, respondents to provide, is it two or three conceptual designs? So we're asking them initially to provide three kind of basic designs to kind of take back to the council and the community and choose kind of our budget scope. So a high, a medium, a low, and then we would have the more robust design depending on what kind of budget you wanted to go with. Yeah. I just want to, you know, on page um, 313 of our um, agenda packet, and it's page four of nine of the um, RFP, um, there just seems to be a little typo in where it refers to. It says developing two, under paragraph two, oh. it's just developing two in parentheses, it has the number three. Um, so just um, maybe just wanted to bring that to your attention before it goes out. Um, Noted, thank you. And so, um, so with, uh, yes, Council Member Bertrand. Um, so the Friends are gonna be doing the fundraising or spearheading that. How about involvement with our citizens here? Is that they're gonna outreach to us and what, is there any coordination in that? I mean, what is our conceived um, part of that besides putting some money in? For the fundraising piece specifically? Yes. Oh. Do you want to take a oh, no, please. Okay. So I don't know exactly what model the Friends of County Parks would use. Um, I would definitely lean on their expertise because this is what they do. They do fundraising campaigns. But often in fundraising campaigns is there is a quiet period where you identify community leaders, people who will be supporters of the project, who are going to step forward and make immediate donations when you announce. Um, so in my experience, and again, I will defer to their sort of judgment and how they would advise. But yes, there's a very strong component of the involving the community and making sure you're outreaching to the right people. And the right people are outreaching to the right people. Um, it's all very um, 
it's a whole profession in and of itself, how to be a really effective fundraiser. Okay, thanks for that. Any other questions on the staff report? Seeing none, I'll say, are there any members of the public that would like to address the council on this item? Seeing none, um, do we have anyone on Zoom that would like to address the council? There are no speakers. All right, thank you. Well, I'll bring it back uh, for the council for further uh, uh, deliberation and uh, action. Mayor Story, if I may. Yes. Um, well, you know, I, I just want to say I am really, really excited about this opportunity for our community, and I'm really excited to have this governing body, this the folks around me today here to help make this move forward. Um, and to have the support of my fellow council members on such a, a really important project and impactful project for not just the city of Capitola, but for the county as we spearhead, um, as we become a model for other communities, not just here in this county, but statewide. Um, so I, I appreciate your support on this and, um, and the community support as we move forward in the fundraising uh, process. So. Um, with that, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the Public Works Department to issue a request for proposals for the design of a universally accessible playground at Jade Street Park. I'll second. Is there a second? Yes. There's a motion by Councilmember Brooks, seconded by Councilmember Bertrand. Um, and before we go to the roll call vote, um, I just want to say, you know, I, I was very excited to see uh, the drawings, the potential drawings of what. Uh, that playground um, will look like one day in the future. Um, I'm also excited about um, having a community fundraising uh, goal here. Um, we recently, just two years ago, we recently went through a community fundraising uh, project for the Capitol Library. Um, and um, I just wanted, that was tremendously successful. Um, the the community really, um, you know, reached out uh, and helped us uh, reach our goals. And actually, we exceeded the goals that we had originally set for the Capitol Library. So I know that this campaign will be well received within the community, um, and um, there will be a lot of community participation to help us reach this goal and achieve this uh, really tremendous, uh, um, I think, public infrastructure project. So thank you, Jessica, for bringing this to us. And um, I'm sure the council will, will be looking forward to seeing this as it progresses. And I'll be watching from the, out, the outside. Um, so with that, can we have a roll call vote, please? Councilmember Brown? Aye. Councilmember Brooks? Aye. Councilmember Bertrand? I agree. Vice Mayor Kaiser? Aye. And Mayor Story? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> I just said, uh, Mayor Story said he'll be the first to donate. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll be looking for you to come back and <laughs> remind me of that. Um, next, we'll move on to item 8C, which is the receive the 2022 special event report and provide direction for <laughs> reoccurring 2023 events. The recommended action is to receive the report, provide direction regarding changes to specific reoccurring special event permit conditions, and determine if any additional review should be required for any 2023 special events. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I'm here this evening to uh, present the report on the 22, this last year's 2022 special events, and then um, have you take a look at those uh, reoccurring special events, uh, the different permit conditions that we have, and then determine if there's any review that we need to um, look into, and then um, ultimately um, make a motion to uh, permit those reoccurring 2023 permits um, that we'll go over. So just a little bit about the special event permit process, the, re the review that we do. 
Um, any new general special events, so that'd be the major events that we have, has to come back before city council for any new event. Uh, the city manager can approve any new minor events, so those are those events that are under 200 people. And then the city council can also, and that's what the, the purpose of this evening is this, is that you can approve planned reoccurring events without, as long as there's no significant changes to those events. Um, so the police department, we issue the permits. Uh, like I said, the general special events permits are over 200 people and have significant impacts to, to city services. That'd be like the Wharf to Wharf, the car show, um, art and wine. Uh, minor special event permits are under 200 attendees um, and have minimal impacts to city services. Um, so those are sometimes the either surf contests, the skateboard contests, um, the, the uh, sip and strolls. And then we also have the art and cultural events. Um, the, those are the um, Wednesday night concerts and the movies at the beach, uh, those different events. So in 2022, the police department issued 11 general uh, uh, special event permits, 17 minor special event permits, and then 23 art and cultural permits. Here's a list of the uh, general permits that we had. Um, so the, the, bigger, the bigger ones are, again, like the art and wine, um, the Capitola car show, uh, Wharf to Wharf, uh, and the Monty Fireworks. And then I'll move into, these are the 17 minor special events. So we had the Sip and Strolls, Operation Surf, uh, Village Easter Egg Hunt, the Halloween Parade, Escape Tola, and then uh, the 23 art and cultural special events. So those are the art and music at the beach, the Wednesday, sorry, it's a typo there, Wednesday night concerts. Uh, the opera at the beach and the Friday night concerts or the Friday night movies. Um, just a little recap. So we've returned to pre pandemic levels. So we've all the special events kind of came back, came back for this, this year. Um, highlights for this year, we, um, through a grant, we were able to install um, or have bollards that are installed um, that we install in strategic locations throughout the village that um, allow us to have locked in bollards so that prevents vehicles from coming in also prevents vehicles from leaving. Um, we also worked collectively with Central Fire um, to deploy what we call critical response teams. So we team up with a fire department, an officer with a fire department personnel. We actively pat like patrol the event. If anything were to happen, they're right on scene. And so that's been something that we added this year that's been a really good cooperative um, effort with the fire department. And then we've also doing, done a joint command. So we have a a captain and then a captain or the chief um, with our department that we have a unified command that we pre-established. So um, we established that incident command system. So if in the event something were to happen, we pre-established that joint command that allows us to respond more effectively. And then um, what we had did have one new event for 2022 and that was a first responder surf contest. It was just this last October. Um, in total, staff billed 384 hours of police time and 83 hours of public works time. All the, all the fees and, and those hours were paid by all the event uh, organizers. Um, as part of it, staff uh, meets with each event organizer and then we also prepare an operations um, order and then we do an after actions report. Um, we did receive a, a few complaints. Um, we received a complaints through the art and wine. There were some parking complaints in the neighborhoods and there was also complaints about vehicles being ticketed in the permitted zones. And then we did have a traffic complaint of diversion traffic on Fanmar. Um, Monty Fireworks, we had uh, complaints about the debris and then we also had complaints about the sounds and then the impacts of both domestic and native animals. Um, these complaints are kind of typical for um, for these these events, we didn't have anything else that was um, that, that was brought to our attention. Um, and again, each of these things are talked about with event organizers, and we attempt to address, uh, like the tr like the traffic complaint, we'll attempt to address those issues and do a better job with noticing. And so, kind of wraps it up. Uh, so the recommended action is to provide direction regarding changes to the specific recurring special event permit conditions and determine if there's any additional review that could be required for any planned reoccurring 2023 special events. And with that, I'm open for any questions. Other questions from council members? I have a question, um, just because that one email or couple emails about the parking ticket right. enforcement. Um, do you think, should we maybe post 
more obvious signage leading up to the event or like I, I know that it's pretty obvious and the people that live here know that it is but I understand visitors coming may not read the signs and it wasn't even a visitor that was upset about it so I don't know <laughs> if like it matters it might be just a new point but maybe just putting out how we do when we're like gonna not allow parking in the village like maybe those kinds of signs a day or two in advance just to be clear yeah i mean we and we've we've been trying to increase definitely the noticing like on our social media platform yeah. so we can absolutely increase that and then it's a challenge because the neighborhood that you're talking about it's permitted in capitola but then right across the railroad tracks it's the county which is not permitted and so people i think are just confused with where the parking where? boundaries okay. are yeah and then they're fighting for spots some even are willing to take a ticket <laughs> totally <laughs> yeah yeah just to absolutely. have a parking spot so it's it's a challenge that you know, signage is one of the things that we can absolutely take a look at okay. for sure. Cool, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, go ahead, Councilman. Um, two questions. One is about um, the significant amount of debris from the fireworks. And I, my own anecdotal observation was there was just a lot more fireworks. It was a magnificent show. And I'm just wondering are, if, and maybe this is a question we can have come back to us of like, because maybe they there's more fireworks ex exploded <laughs> um that there's more debris and if that's something we need to discuss just to make sure we're following all safety guidelines and and the um, sanctuary you know uh, rules and protection um, issues and then my second uh, is about halloween we had a wonderful humongous <laughs> turnout and i'm just wondering if we need to reconsider that as a uh, special event instead of a minor event for next year and if there's been conversations about that. So actually um, I can talk about the, the debris to start with. The, yes, the, so the debris, it's an issue. A lot of it depends on, um, we get the south winds that Weather. will come up in the yeah. evening and so that debris that would end up in the ocean ends up on property owners and, and so yeah. that's where we get the complaints. Um, but we can obviously look into to, to what the regulations are. Uh, with great. that yeah and then in addition and correct me if i'm wrong my understanding is is that the event organizers actually contract with save our shores and conduct two post event beach cleanup events to get the debris out of the off the beach and out of the ocean is that is I, that correct I, I wouldn't believe yeah i've read so, that in, yeah. the, in the sep so that, that is that would be great if staff could can bring that I back can. to council to uh, so it can remind us and we can remind the community about how we can all participate yeah. Um, in events like that, not all of our constituents use Facebook or social media platforms. I'm just wondering if we'll put it in our newsletter, things like that, just to to ensure that everyone knows about those opportunities. But I'm still interested in, in ensuring that we're up to standards of um, of what the the rules are for the sanctuary. Yeah, ab absolutely. And so that's a future agenda item, or is it more just sort of information in our newsletters? I don't okay. need a, a study. Okay. <laughs> um, and then for Halloween? Yeah, and then for the Halloween parade, um, we actually encouraged the, the chamber to actually file a permit this year, and in the past they haven't done that. Okay. Um, and so this was the first year, and so they started with the minor permit, which is, again, it's, it's around the 200 um, person mark, but it also has to do with significant impacts to the city um, uh, the, our, our function and so because it is kind of a short and shortened duration um, it, that, it's right on the edge of whether it needs to kind of move into that higher category um, with that becomes just more permit fees and and the cost then come get pushed over to the chamber oh, okay do you know offhand what the difference is between a minor event and special event in terms of cost the cost, I just, I know the insurance and, and stuff. I don't know the exact cost. It just depends on the, I, I can say for like, even like my minor, the skateboard event, it's like $600 in insurance. So I'm not sure if, if it goes up for a, a general event. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't want to require that change if it doesn't allow for that kind of, you know, for the Halloween event to happen if we can't afford it or something like that. Right. Maybe so. it could be other parameters other than just the 200 mark. Like if it is like you're stating like the impact, like how short the duration of the event is or something, like if that could be con considered as far as cost and all that too. 
Those are all my so questions. So yeah. So you. the history actually of the Children's Parade is quite interesting. I think it just sort of evolved. And for a long time, they didn't actually, there was no permit for it. It, was ha it just happened. And the city participated very actively. And the chamber participated. And the businesses participated. But there was no necessarily like one organizer that was organizing everything. So we're trying to put a little bit more structure around it. Because you know it isn't a very long duration event. But it's a lot of people. Right, and so we do want to make sure that we have a real critical incident team that's prepared and ready to respond. So we're cognizant of like not just throwing a bunch of costs on to, off on the chamber on an event that's really beloved by the community and also been a real partnership for many years. So we're trying to put a little bit more structure about around it, but do it in a responsible way. Okay, Council Member Bertrand. Yeah, um, yeah, I really appreciate the uh, change and focus on uh, organizing and setting up command centers. Um, I think that's uh, critical, uh, especially from the way the public feels about how events are being conducted. I mean, that's what you're trying to do. Um, in the past, uh, there used to be a lot of letters about the idea of we're just intonated with events and the people that are sort of taking away from the quality of the village and the town. And I haven't seen those emails lately. And um, do you have a sense about you know how the public is responding, especially the uh, residents downtown? in terms of their feeling about the number of events, the impact on the community, that kind of thing. Yeah, um, I would say that there, I, I would say that we're at that capacity. I mean, I think there's a, there's a tremendous amount of special events. I think um, the, the, the village has almost an event almost every weekend. Um, and it does have an impact on, um, like the businesses, depending on what event, some thrive, some it just depends on what's, what happens with the different events. But I do feel that it's, we're at kind of that capacity. Um, but, you know, as we kind of add more, you know, we've added like the Women on Wave, but Women on Waves became a one day to a two day, but then the J race went away. So we've, we've kind of maintained about that 11 th for the generals, and then the, spe the minors hasn't changed too much. So that's, I think we're, we're at a pretty good place as far as, but I think we're right at that capacity. Okay, and some things are still impromptu, like the ukulele thing and such. And uh, how's that turning out? I mean, every time I go down, it's, it's a great thing, but is there anything that's ever come up to your attention? No, we, I've, I haven't received any p complaints. I know they work well with the different event <coughs> organizers, and I think at times they even bring a, a, a fun element to, to, to a lot of them. Right. And so they're, they've, they've, they're a welcomed addition. Okay, thank you. Um, if um, one, uh, I would like to, you know, the conversation about the Monty fireworks extravaganza and the debris cleanup, um, I guess I did want to acknowledge, I, I got e emails and pictures from residents who uh, were at the beach the next morning and they were actually showing, you know, all the exploded pieces of <laughs> ordnance that was all over the beach. and. And I would, I, I think it would behoove us to try to get get out in front of that, and let the community know that we have an active cleanup response uh, team um, that's going to be there and um, resp you know and, and picking up whatever uh, debris may be left over, um, and um, just so that um, you know that at least the community knows that we're aware of it. Um, and that uh, you know we are um, wanting to put this on in an as environmentally um, friendly manner as we possibly can, um, you know, with that kind of activity. Um, so, and then also with the, um, I did want to um, let you know that at the last Arts Commission meeting, um, and Nikki can confirm this, that we had a discussion um, about the art and music at the beach. Um, we have lost the, our coordinator that, uh, that did that for the Arts Commission. Um, and there were some identified issues about having that being an ongoing event um, at that particular location. There are just certain things on a Sunday at the beach in the summer, it can get kind of congested and logistically difficult with these uh, various uses. Um, 
So I think the council will want to at least monitor and work with the Arts Commission closely um, and seeing if it's even going to be possible to resurrect the art and music at the beach or maybe some other location that may be more suitable. So I just wanted to share that um, discussion that took place at the Arts Commission at our last meeting. Um, so are there any other questions? Seeing none, I'll, are there any members of the public that would like to address the council on this item? Seeing none, um, anyone on Zoom? There are no speakers. No speakers, okay, thank you. With that, I'll uh, uh, bring it back for the council um, and I think the only uh, action is to receive the report, so I don't think we need a motion on this particular one. No, but I just did want to, because it was on the slide for a special event um, that Surf and Santa's this weekend. So if anyone is was not aware, Santa's right. surfing in on Saturday. Mm -hmm. All day. right. Might be waves, too. Ooh. Always good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, with that, that brings us to item nine, adjournment. Um, um, and um, as requested, I am going to adjourn this meeting um, in honor of the victims of the Club Q uh, tragedy in Colorado Springs. Um, you know, it's always heartbreaking when we wake up and hear about another mass shooting um, in our country. Um, and hopefully, you know, with that, that can come to an, an end and that we can do what we can um, so that no community has to bear those, you know, tragedies and wear those scars. Um, so, and just I think from all of us, um, our heartfelt, um, you know, um, um, sympathies um, to the loss of the people of Colorado Springs. And I, and I believe this affects everyone in Colorado Springs, not just you know the immediate victims or. Uh, the immediate families of the victims and so so with that I'm going to adjourn this meeting in honor of uh, the victims of that shooting and the people of Colorado Springs and I will adjourn this meeting until our next regularly scheduled meeting on December 8th 2022 at um, 7 p.m. is that's er, 7 p.m. 6 p.m. So, okay that's we right that I, I was thinking you're right yeah that meeting will be at 6 p.m. on December the 8th, 2022. You don't want to miss it because it's going to be a um, transition of the city council after the confirmation of the election. So thank you, everyone, and good night.